Hello everybody, my name is Henry Tenby and welcome to this edition of Model Moment. We've got a military subject today and we're going to be covering the F-105 Thunder Chief. For those of you that don't know, the F-105 was a 1950s all-weather uh, fighter bomber that was developed by Republic Aviation, uh, Farmingdale, New York, Long Island in the 1950s. The airplane first flew, I believe, in 1955 and went into service with the United States Air Force in 1958. I believe 833 F-105s were actually built uh, for, during a 10-year period from the mid-50s through the mid-1960s. And the aircraft was famous uh, during the Vietnam War, where it was used uh, to suppress enemy uh, missile locations. And the aircraft was a very large aircraft. The F-105 was typically flown by uh, one pilot, and it was actually the largest or the heaviest single-engine jet fighter to be developed in the 1950s ever. And it could deliver more bombs than a B-17 uh, from World War II. So that's an interesting tidbit about the F-105. Now, for our purposes, the F-105 uh, in, in the form of display models is what we're going to be talking about. And what I have in front of me are two 148 scale cast aluminum F-105 Thunder Chief models that were built uh, in between the 1950s and the 1960s by Verkyle. And I'm gonna talk about the models. There are differences. There's, there's two versions. And uh, as you can see here, they are, there's slight differences between the two and I'm going to go over these models in this video. So I hope you'll stay tuned. We do have a short commercial break. And after that, we've got all the information that you're looking for. I'm also a collector of 35 millimeter color slides of aircraft. If you have an aircraft slide collection that you'd like to dispose of or sell or get rid of, I'd love to hear from you. Please feel free to contact me at my email address, which is shown on the screen. That's henrytenby at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing from you about your slide collection. Okay, so we're gonna start with this version of the model. Uh, they both are mounted on uh, stands which are sing which are basically curved metal that fit into the back end of the model um, and allow the airplane to, allow the aircraft to articulate for ho however you wish to present the model whether you want you know top view bottom view and these stands are usually accompanied with the models when you find them sometimes you can find the models without the stands and the value will be less so this model, uh, again, these were made by Verkeil or Verku uh, in the Netherlands between, I believe, the late 1950s and the mid 1960s. And the rumor, uh, we can't confirm 120%, but the rumor is that they produced enough of these models to give one to every single pilot in the US Air Force that actually flew the aircraft. So it's believed that 10,000 of these models were made. I've heard that number ba uh, bantied about. I'm not sure if it's true. Uh, again, I don't have production uh, paperwork from Verkyle to support that, but the models were ordered by Republic uh, Aviation uh, as promotional pieces, and they were gifted to the pilots uh, in the US Air Force by Republic. So, there are a lot of these models out there. Whether the number is 10,000 or 4,000 or 2,000, I honestly don't know. But I do know that the models appear regularly on eBay. At any given time, you will find these models listed on eBay. And they're typically offered by sellers in the United States. The model is big, it's impressive. It, the shape is really quite nice. And it's actually an affordable model for what it is. So for the collector that's looking to get his feet wet in the military aircraft side of the hobby, this is a great piece to add to your collection. It's going to appreciate in value for the simple reason that it's a nice model, it's a vintage model. And right now um, there's plenty of supply, but I believe in 10 or 20 years as this hobby grows in popularity and more people enter the hobby, it's like anything, uh, the supply will start to shrink relative to the number of people that are looking for these models. So if you're looking for a model as an investment, if you'd like to have a nice model that's military on your 
desktop or in your collection, this is a great piece to add and I highly recommend them, but don't overpay. And we'll talk about values uh, towards the end of the video. But in terms of how this model is constructed, it is a, it's a one piece casting. And uh, I don't know where they uh, split the seam during the sand casting process, but um, it's been polished out. The model's heavy, weighs maybe a couple, two or three pounds. Both versions of the model have the same ident 40105. So this particular aircraft uh, was ordered by the US Air Force in 1954. That's what the four designates. And on the front, it tells you what kind of aircraft it is. They say FH-105. I'm not sure what the FH is. And maybe some of you military experts out there can speak to that. But uh, this is an F-105D, I believe. Uh, again, single man. And the aircraft was... Um, these aircraft flew a lot of missions in Vietnam. And I believe they were largely replaced in this role by f uh, F-4 Phantom uh, aircraft uh, in the mid to late 1960s, and these played a support role. But nonetheless, the F-105 Thunder Chiefs remained in service with the U.S. Air Force and were in inventory until about 1984 when the final examples were retired. Uh, it's a big, heavy airplane, burns, sucks back a lot of gas, and um, have a look at this. The top surface surfaces of the wings have these black lines. And on the next example, the other one I'm gonna show you, they actually don't exist. So um, there you have it. it. The stand, give you a little bit of a up close view of the stand. You've got the F-105 uh, Thunder Chief monogrammed enameled logo, which is riveted uh, on a plaque into place on the front of the stand. And as you can see, this is hollow. It's, uh, it's a really nice stand. Um, this, these will polish up quite nicely. You do have to be careful if you're gonna polish these models because you don't wanna remove the polish. Be careful not to get it onto the decals because these decals are 50, 60 years old and you can damage the decals with, with polish. So you have to know what you're doing and you have to be careful. And uh, I've seen these models completely polished naked on on eBay, so if somebody's done a high buff polish on them, they've completely stripped all the livery off and put insane prices on them, several hundred dollars, if not more. I've even seen them as high as $2,000, so be very careful. You don't wanna overpay for these models. They're, they're plentiful. Everyone can have one now at a pretty reasonable price. So um, yeah, I recommend the model. So this is, this is the model that was made by Verkyle. It doesn't actually have the Verkyle insignia or stamping or any form of the model maker mark on the model, but we all know as collectors these were made by Matthias Verkyle. And um, in my opinion, I think this is the preferred model over the, the next version that I'm about to show you. And you can tell me what you think after you've seen the next version of this model, which I'll present to you now. Okay, so here's the second version of this model. Uh, the actual model itself, the physical model, is not identical to what I just showed you. Can some of you see what the main difference is? It's quite obvious. I'll actually bring the model a little bit closer so you can have a look. It's the cockpit. In the other version of the model, it was, it's uh, part of the molded aluminum of, 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 of the casting. As, as you can see here, uh, this, this is not plastic, but on this version of the model, it's a injected clear plastic canopy, which in my opinion, isn't as nice. Now, many of these, these models, not many, but I have seen them with the cockpit missing. So that of course detra detracts from the value of this example here. That's not an issue if you have this particular version of the model. So, uh, They've changed the deco artwork. Instead of saying FH-105, it now says F-105. Uh, you've still got the green, uh, the green, dark green glare shield treatment. Registration is the same, 40105. But if we look at the top surface of the wings, we are missing the wing walkway lines. I'm not sure what they're actually called, but I think it's for service technicians to get on top of the wing. And so these 
these, these lines are actually not present on uh, this version of the model. I believe this is the latter version of the model. Now these were produced with a slightly different stand, which I'll show you, but they were made for topping models or they were distributed by topping models. This model appeared in promotional brochures issued by topping models uh, in the early 1960s. So Verkail made the model. They made a slight variation by having a glass cockpit and we see them as promotional pieces in the topping models catalog. So I'll just remove that from the stand. Um, what else can we see? Actually, there is another difference which I'm going to point out. I've just noticed it right now. Um, turn the model onto the underside. You can see it's quite similar. Um, straight on view. Now, have a look at the contour of, the, of that trailing edge. This is a round, and this is a round. It's not straight, but if you look at the original version of the model, it's, it's straighter, it's not as round. So there was variation in these models for sure. Um, what else have we got here? Um, not too much else. Um, Size-wise, of course, absolutely identical. Um, you can't see it, but they are absolutely identical. The castings are the same with, with exception to the cockpit being, as I say, plastic, which um, has yellowed in this case. I'm guessing most of the models that retain the cockpit have yellowed canopies. Um, the red uh, danger um, band around the fuselage on this particular model has worn away. I don't think it detracts from the model too much. The uh, USAF uh, emblem and uh, titles there are pretty much the same as the other aircraft. So what else? Oh yes, here on this model, there's no black ray dome. Whereas on the earlier model there, although it's worn away, I can touch that up. That's an easy touch up, but you can see they actually painted a black ray dome on the model. Let's have a look at the stand now. Uh, this is the ladder stand. It's got, I'll just compare it to you. The F-105 monogrammed logo is a little bit larger. The plaque treatment is a little bit different, but it's, it's pretty much the same logo. The Republic F-105 logo is very similar. The stands are very similar in design. They're both hollowed. Now, the, this one here, I've not polished. This has been polished. So they will polish up really beautifully and handsomely. Um, this is actually a piece that's welded onto the base, whereas this version of the stand is a single casting that's been uh, machined up or cast in that manner. So um, very slight variations. I don't know which one is nicer. I think they're both nice, actually. I'm not gonna say one is nicer than the other, so that, that's probably personal preference as to which stand people like uh, better than the others. So there you have it. This is, um, these are the two F-105 models. They're, they're cool. Uh, they're heavy pieces. I mean, I'm, I'm feeling that, that you're getting some bicep work by holding this like this. If you hold it for 10 minutes, you're definitely going to get uh, a good, uh, good workout there. These are not um, light models. If they fall, they're going to make a hell of a racket. By the same token, if these models fall and the wing impacts the ground, you're going to have a wing bend. And I have seen these models with serious wing bends uh, for sale. And not to say they can't be straightened out, but obviously you prefer to get a better model than a lesser model. So uh, let's talk about the values on these models. I, uh, as, as you all know, I like to give advice that will be of value to you as a collector and I prefer that you not overpay for these models. Um, I've seen the models range in, in, uh, in price all the way from mid 100s to mid 400s, upper 400s. It really depends, uh, like, like anything, on, on condition. So what, where, where is the area that you're, we're gonna have varying condition, con, you know, conditions? Well, if the model has become pitted. These models are good examples because the aluminum, the aluminum has remained in good shape, but I've seen these models 
where the entire surface is badly corroded and pitted. And sometimes that pitting simply, oops, sometimes that pitting simply does not come off and the model is uh, permanently scarred with the pitting. So that's, that's a contributing factor. Bent wings is a contributing factor. If the decals are off, that's a contributing factor. If the clear canopy is missing, that is a contributing factor. If the stand is missing, that is a contributing factor. So you're gonna have to spend some time watching the market. Uh, watch these airplanes on eBay. As I say, they're always on eBay. They are, every, there's not a day, there's hardly a day that will go by that you can't find one of these models listed for sale on eBay. Um, the most pristine example that I saw recently uh, in the last few months sold uh, in the mid fours. Um, average examples will sell in the high twos to mid threes and then much lesser examples, those with missing cockpits or bent, serious bends and mi missing stands will sell in the mid ones, you know, up to $200 range. So. Uh, kind of depends on how much you want to spend, and uh, there's a lot of options there for you. Uh, which one do you like better? I think I like the solid cockpit better with the paint treatment. I think it looks better. Um, also, there's, there's no chance of ever losing the cockpit. There's always a chance that this can come off and get lost. The yellow cockpit, um, yeah, it's not so great. So I think I prefer this earlier version of the model right here. Uh, I would value it perhaps a little higher than this, but I, I haven't noticed a discernible difference in prices between these two models on eBay. And I've been watching them for several years. And really the prices on these have not moved up. Um, the variation that I pointed out, you know, the mid ones to mid fours, that's pretty much been at play for the last several years. So, but I think that'll change. I think in five years or 10 years from now, uh, when people watch this video, they'll say, my God, you could have bought these models for that price back then. Uh, now they're much more. So let's see if, if that actually uh, becomes the reality in, in the months ahead. So what do you think? Do you have one of these models? Uh, what do you think of their value? Do you think they're worth investing in? Would you like to have one of these models in your collection? Uh, if not, let me know. If yes, let me know. I do always look forward to comments in the videos. So obviously, if you enjoyed the video, I really appreciate a thumbs up. I always appreciate the comments. And don't hesitate to subscribe to our channel by clicking the little red subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner of the frame. And you'll be notified whenever we publish videos on, on the channel. So this is Model Moment. Again, my name is Henry Tenby. I'm also the publisher of the Aircraft Display Model Collector, Investor, and Appraisal Guide, which is a 162-page volume, color volume, that details all the popular aircraft display models made by the major manufacturers and talks about the values of these models. So if you're looking at getting into collecting these models, this book is of interest to you and you should check it out. You can check it out on my website, henrytenby.com. So... Thank you for that. If you would like to sell any models, I'm always a cash buyer of models. If you have models for sale, don't hesitate to send me an email to henrytenby at gmail.com and I look forward to hearing from you. So thank you very much for tuning into this video and I look forward to seeing you on the next edition of Model Moment. Hi there, my name is Henry Tenby. As you can see, I'm a lifelong dedicated aviation enthusiast, and I think you are as well. I've been interested in aviation and airlines and classic aircraft going back to when I was three years old. My first airport visits that I remember were in the summer of 1967. So vintage airliners, vintage prop liners, those are all my areas of specialty and interest. I'm also very interested in aviation video, you're probably interested in aviation video too because you're here watching on YouTube. I started video filming aircraft in the late 1980s and I've been digitizing old aviation movies and films from the 1950s for the last 20 years. 
If you're as passionate about aviation and video and film as much as I am, I'd like to invite you to try my new aviation streaming service that I created for fanatics just like us. It's called Jetflix TV. There are over a thousand full feature aviation videos and movies on Jetflix TV, which you can stream to your favorite device and you get unlimited access to Jetflix TV for a very low price. We're talking less than the cost of a cup of coffee per month. At Jetflix TV, we have many categories of aviation films to satisfy every interest and passion, including Russian aircraft, classic prop liners, classic jet liners, vintage post-war military aircraft, trip reports, airport reports, you name it, it's there. We digitized Air Canada's historic film archive, and we have the entire Air Canada, TransCanada Airlines film archive on Jetflix TV for you to enjoy. And that is dozens of films that I know that you're going to find absolutely fascinating. So there's a link in the upper right hand corner of this film right now that you can click on and it will take you to a page where you can sign up. You can enjoy the entire Jetflix TV platform Watch as much as you want and decide if it's for you. We release new content on an ongoing basis, so be sure to sign up for a year, six months, one year, whatever you like, you're going to enjoy it. I look forward to seeing you at Jetflix TV.